It's one of the biggest names in beginner Japanese textbooks, and I think, frankly, for a pretty good reason. The goods, the bads, I'm showing you the sausage being made. Is it worth being on your shelf, or is it really just a space saver? Stay tuned to find out. Hey, what's going on, everybody? My name is Chad. Of course, you can you can look. It's right there. It's on the channel. I have proof. I have legal documents. And this week, we're back on our Japanese resource review series. Now, I took a week off because St. Chaddy's destroyed me, and don't worry, I will have that highlight reel out. But we're back, and actually, this video is sponsored, again, by members, plural, of our community. Now, that seems kind of weird. Why members, if it's a single book? And that's because... Well, two people sent me the same book. So Fred L. sent me the last textbook that we reviewed, textbook, the Effective Communications book during our last series, as well as first edition of Japanese from Zero. Now, consequently, around actually about the same time, Matthew Fisher, by the way, thank you so much, sent me Japanese from Zero 1, 3, 5, don't know why I skipped the middle ones, but whatever, and the kanji book. Now this is a really cool, kind of unique thing, because I normally do these as I get the books, book by book by book, my opinions on that, as well as whatever I can kind of research about the greater picture of these textbooks. But he sent me almost everything. So I'm really excited to take a look at it. I know for me personally, uh, I get comments all the time of people asking about grammar things or specific problems they're having in Japanese. And I literally can just look at the Japanese from Zero YouTube channel, George's channel, and he's just prolific. He has videos on all this, so it's really easy for me to go, you know, I could take the eight hours it takes me to make one of these videos, or I can just send you George's channel. And I've done that for years. In fact, when I was a beginner, he had two or three videos. I can't even remember what they're on now, but I struggled so bad when I was a beginner on those things, and those videos helped me tremendously. So long story short, I really owe George a ton. He helped set me on the right trajectory to kind of explode out of my beginner and put me into where I am today, wherever the heck that is. But I didn't use his resources. I never actually bought a Japanese from Zero textbook, although I thumbed through one at a, a Japanese language school that I was in in Japan. And you know, I, he doesn't know who I am, I guarantee there's no way. However, since he did not sponsor this video, I owe him nothing in a good review. It doesn't mean I'm gonna intentionally be harsh, but I just, I don't have to cherry code it. That's one of the cool things about my channel. All these textbook reviews are sent to me by you people, or I buy them. Either way. So that means the only people that I have to impress or that I have to make happy are you guys and me. So because of that, it's really nice. I get to be honest and say my honest thoughts about the book. And it seems like 18, almost 19,000 of you guys seem to either agree or appreciate my opinion. So I am going to divide my Japanese from zero reviews into several videos because it would be hours long and I don't want to do that to you. But this week, we're looking at Japanese from zero part one. Where does it fall? How does it compare to the other textbooks that I've reviewed, all 27 of them? Is it worth you buying? What are the goods, the bads, the uglies, the chads? Let's head over to the hands-on table and I'll let you guys know. Hey, welcome back everybody. This is the hands-on review table. And no, we are not reviewing Kanji from Zero, but I did want to show you guys what's coming up. We got Kanji from Zero, Japanese 5-3, and of course, uh, let me get focus. Yes, the pan ultimate. So thank you so much, Matthew, for sending me all these. We will get to these. Wow, that was loud. As we go. Now, I don't know if you can tell from how big that kathwap was. These books are hefty. Um, this one is an older version with a thinner paper just because I figured it would be easier for me to review. I have two of them and a newer one with much thicker paper that more resembles uh, the kanji from Zero Book. You can see that the, the new ones that they make, you can see it thanks to the kanji from Zero Book. Uh, they are much, much thicker from now. But beyond this iconic art, what is there to say about it? How nice is this? Is this something that I would use? Um, let's do what I always do first off. Uh, I will only show you what is absolutely necessary to give a, a good, logical, um, competent review. I do not want to show extra pages. You're, you, you know, we're not going over every single page of the book. I don't want you to use this uh, as a means to kind of snipe the book, right? If you think that this review has told you enough that you want to purchase this, if you want to support George Trombley, um, I believe his wife, Yukati, although I don't want to presume. If this is something you want to support, like go and pay for the book. Go support the guy. They've put in so much time into the series. Go support the people that give us the things that make our community work. Like, textbooks, learning resources. But yeah, I think we can actually start. Uh, one of the very first things that I want to say actually has to do with the back. Um, I always do a count off. And by the way, the, the book didn't come to me this way. This was my stupid cat. So that, that don't let that play on your opinion of the series just yet. Um, but this guy right here. So all of this, you know, is pretty standard update. This is the 7.0 series. But if you look here, it says over 800 new words and expressions. Now I have gone through 
and compared it to Japanese for Dummies, Beginning Japanese, the, the Genki 1 and 2 books, the Mina books that I have, there's a lot of those. Um, this is a grammar guide, don't worry about that, but but regardless, that's actually pretty good if, if it really is 800. The problem is, I went to the back of the book over yonder, and uh, I counted every single one of these, and it came up short. Now clearly, right, this isn't deceptive marketing, I think it's just something that a lot of us don't really think about. 800 words and expressions, they're probably including grammar, um, any of that early phraseo uh, phraseology that you learn, as well as the words, because the vocab comes out to 472 words that I counted. Who knows, maybe I counted wrong there, over the 13 chapters that are there. Now, to give you some comparison, the Genki books, you typically learn about 800-ish per book. Uh, just vocabulary, and you can see that it is really robust. It's about, a, I don't know, was it 13 pages, 11 pages, something crazy like that? I mean, it's, a, it's many pages here. This is just the English. There's also the Japanese one. Um, and when you look at theirs, it's, I think, four pages? One, two, three, four, five, right? So it's about half as many words um, compared to the Genki books. However, there is a reason for that. And this is one of the, uh, the gripes that I have with a lot of people reviewing this uh, when I looked at Reddit or when I looked on Amazon. Uh, if you just took five seconds and read the inside page. When we began writing the Japanese from Zero series, it was out of frustration with current Japanese books on the market. So they wrote this because they didn't see what their vision was on the market. So what was that vision? I felt they were either too fast, too slow, or too complicated. So let's think about that. Uh, is their point in a book that is about the same size as the Genki books, right? I mean, this is the thin one, right? But here, I'll grab any of the others. Like, here's the kanji one, right? It's about the same size-ish. I mean, Genki's been around since they've made this for sure. And they said it was either too fast, too complicated, or too slow. Which, uh, I think we all know who's to blame for that. Jokes aside, I think this fits a different market than Genki or Mina or any of those other people are actually trying to fit. And that is frankly, they are, they are prioritizing using the language, experiencing it along with the culture and a lot of the things that keep people studying. Um, this is often why I see a lot of people quit once they start hitting the kanji climb is because it stops being like fun and interesting and you stop learning about the culture and the, and the, the stuff that you like, like anime or manga. And it really just feels like this grind that just goes on forever. And periodically throughout this book, I found every chapter way more engaging than Genki, way faster than Japanese for Dummies. Um, I would say about the same breakdown as Tai Kim. I would say it's compatible, uh, more or less. Uh, way more interesting than Mina, for sure. Uh, and then again, comparable to, to beginning Japanese. It's meant to be fun. It's meant to, you know, teach you the language, just like all these are. No one's saying any of these aren't doing that job. Um, but I gotta say, as someone who's gone through all these books, held these books, reviewed them, uh, studied them really, uh, putting them into Excel spreadsheets, comparing the knowledge, out of all of that, this has been the most fun for me. And it's also really a couple of reasons. First off, this is the workbook. There's gonna be less in this than there is in just a Genki straight up, because you actually do more with every piece that you have in here, and every single piece is broken down into even smaller units than in Genki or in Mina, to the point where you almost might be like, wow, this is a little bit redundant, or it could even be a little bit slow for some people. But all throughout it, it was fun. So why don't we take a look at a sample chapter. Let's take a look, uh, I guess comparatively, we'll check out a chapter. There's 13 different chapters. Each of them takes on uh, one thing that I really thought was interesting, uh, that I actually had this idea when I was really early into studying Japanese that I thought would be a good idea. I never knew it existed, but I'm kind of happy it does because now we really get to see uh, the benefit of it. If you could see here, baby, look at that. Ah, kachon, inu. Ooh, she. Now that I'm not doing the, I'm not doing the emphasis. I'm just trying to really show you. Look, they added in a kana, but they kept the rest of it in Romanji. Why is that? As you go throughout the book, you are actually. This is meant to start you when you don't even know kana. Like most books allow you to. They go, or as a prerequisite, I should say. Hey, you should learn the kana before you start. Uh, the Genki's that way. The Mina's that way. But if you look, ka e ru o ko ru. So you're actually encountering it in the pieces that you don't know in between all the ones that you know They fill in so you can learn the vocab uh, Now mind you, I don't know exactly if that's gonna be a good or a bad thing I did have this idea because I was like man This would be so helpful if someone did that and then as I grew as I started learning more I was completely fine with the fact that the prerequisite is just learn the alphabet uh, it's not that hard to learn But it is interesting to actually see it go into practice and this is one of the only textbooks I've seen that does this 
So it's, uh, it, it is very interesting. Now, as is my tradition, I always pick one in the middle, so it's not so early that you guys think that maybe the book's too easy or it's so late that uh, it's not accurate to how the whole book is. Let's look here. This is lesson six, level one. Let's see what a normal uh, level and lesson looks like. So it starts off, it tells you what you want to learn, some goals and objectives to what this chapter is for. You guys can actually see their jaw nigh. They actually, they haven't learned jaw yet, but they have learned nigh by now. So that's kind of interesting. You also have a new word list. And if you guys can see that this is significantly less than most other books give inside a single chapter, inside a single part. And that's frankly because they are introducing you to less. Uh, the Genkis introduce you to what, like 30 pieces every single chapter. These guys start with regular words. The funny thing is they have the progression Aggressive reading, it's like Hoshi, and then you have Hoshi, the kana, how to actually read them. Then they actually do give you the kanji. Although inside this book, there's not a ton of kanji learning. Uh, mind you, they have a separate book for that, so I won't judge them too harshly on that. And also, I guess I should say in my own defense, I've been hypercritical of how most textbooks handle uh, kanji learning. So the fact that they chose to omit it, I find fine as long as they do offer another alternative and, and they did. Now every single chapter has a culture clip. So this is just talking a little bit about the culture, learning about how the language is reflected through the culture. A lot of textbooks have this, I mean, iconically beginning Japanese does this really well. I think it's interesting, especially for a newbie. Um, we might all go, oh, well, who doesn't know Kun and Chan and that stuff? Um, but there's not everyone that's weeaboos, right? Like, not everyone watches anime, so that's really cool to see. They give you a phrase to remember, just a new one. They then give you a list of a couple adjectives. Again, these are uh, a lot less than you'll get in most of the other mainstream books, but they're not trying to cram. You can see how they're trying to rein back. It is so easy for them, if they wanted to, to add, I mean, what, 13 chapters, that's 13 more pages to add a page full of vocabulary. They're intentionally not doing that. So again, this brings out one of those touches. If you are someone who's trying to either speed run the language, do like deep immersion, uh, try and get as much Japanese even from the start as you can, this book probably isn't for you. But if you're not, you know, AJAT master race or whatever it is that you uh, align yourself with uh, linguistically or politically, and you, you know, you wanna have fun, you wanna enjoy it, this is not a bad start. Then we come up, we have grammar up here. I can get the book to stay place. Uh, and you know, the grammar is about the same as everyone else. It's not, uh, it's not particularly unique. I figure obviously it's a language, there's a finite amount of ways to express all of these ideas. It does a fine job. I, I went through all the chapters. Uh, it's not like I was missing anything that wasn't already present either in this book, another chapter. Uh, it, you know, it's pretty par for the course. The big thing that does kind of suck is you only go through maybe, I would say half of the actual grammar points of a Genki one or a Mina, as you do in this book, in, in terms of progress in grammar, as well as, I guess, you know, vocabulary. Maybe, uh, that's probably not fair. Half probably isn't fair. I think I did the math, like I added up all of the different grammar points of the both and it was like 67%, but it, or, you know, it's almost 70. You know, it's not that bad, but it is definitely a slower pace, but this is way more detailed. So if you're someone who looked at maybe my other textbook reviews and you thought that there, you wanted some more, you needed some more out of your textbooks, uh, this really goes, into every possible explanation and option to get you to understand what these beginner grammar points mean, at least. We'll see how it gets when we're at chapter five. Now again, this is specifically this chapter, but a lot of them are like this. Let's take a look at just how much these guys go into depth. So obviously, as you learn every new chapter, you basically learn a new uh, symbol on the Kana chart, right? These are the H's through here. So they give you the stroke orders, how to write them correctly. They give you the various fonts that these can show up in, depending on the scripts of each. They teach you which ones have uh, these little dib 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 doobity dabblies on it. Some practice writing it and remembering it. I mean, look, that's, what is that? Five pages of just Kana practice for five Kana. Uh, way more than you get with most things. Frankly, most books don't devote that much to kanji. Uh, but beyond that, let's keep looking. Look at how much there is. These are all, uh, you know, grammar points and how they're used and words and stuff. But just look at this chapter. Look at how much is actually in here. I mean, it's wild. This is all still, gosh, this is all still one. And then once you're finally over here, you have the answer key for the chapter at the very end, and then you start the next chapter. This is the vocabulary groups for chapter seven. So just look at how thick that chapter was. There's so much here that this really is a workbook, uh, a method of learning Kana. Although, look, I won't hate you if you go, why would you waste the paper? Why wouldn't you just pick up a free app on the Apple store and learn the Kana before you start? It means that they could get farther. There is an argument for that. I, I am not uh, against that. I'm just saying, 
what they do do is extensive. And if you're someone who's found yourself always kind of wanting more, uh, especially at the beginner level on how much is in these books, this one, if you ask for more after this book, there's no more more. Like there is no book that will give you more inherently inside the book. Now in the back, right, you get a glossary, you get maps of Japan, you get lists of names, which I always thought was pretty cool. You can learn the names, how they're read, and the kanji that goes with them, because they're not always uh, obvious for anyone that has tried to read Japanese business cards before. But all that stuff you can get online for free. It's not nothing that adds super extra value. But there is something that to me has added a ton of value to this book. Uh, the very first thing is you see these QR codes? Hey, hey textbook developers, join the 21st century. We do not need your DVDs. We do not need your CDs. Most people don't even have a CD player in their car anymore. So you can actually point your QR code at this. It will open up the Japanese From Zero YouTube channel and you can learn. He has a whole series on this book as well as whole videos on each one of these books. Uh, he does live streams there where you can ask him questions in real time. The dude that made this textbook uh, and someone that, by the way, is a career interpreter. On top of that, they have a forum, uh, which I did not frequent all that much, but they do have uh, video games that go with these books. You can actually go on their website. Uh, it's free to play, but I think that there's like extra stuff that you could do if you bought the book or have an account uh, with them. That is free, by the way. But think about how cool that is. Like, why isn't the biggest Japanese textbook on the market right now? This has the largest market share or the second largest or the ones for the short bus. Why don't these have, like, why don't they have this? Why do we still have books that try and give us CDs when you could just have it all on a YouTube playlist or all on your own website? And by the way, you could monetize that video and get extra money for it. On top of all of this, and this isn't something inherent to this textbook or any of their textbooks, but it has to do with their community, the brand for Japanese from Zero, uh, they have a really vibrant community of language learners. Yeah, you can see here there's a hundred plus Japanese from zero video lessons. They have online courses, a Discord server, and apparently they're working on a dialect book. I that, that one's actually new to me. I'll have to check that out. Um, yeah, this just all around it offers word for word, grammar point for grammar point. Sure, it does offer less than the mainstream books. Um, and it's not just a little bit less, it, it is quite a bit less, but they do add more in the areas that were important for them. Having not too fast or too slow of a speed means that, yeah, you're not gonna go through as much as you do in a Genki or a Minna, um, or remembering the kanji, obviously. But then again, if you wanted just dollar for dollar the best, just buy a dictionary. It's like 200,000 words. Uh, but the point is that you're trying to have a framework to go with the Japanese that you're doing. On top of that, yeah, it can seem almost like overkill if you're someone who doesn't struggle that bad at the beginning level. Maybe you only struggle on a couple of things because then it might just be worth it to get your Genki or your Mina and then, you know, use either the online, I, I wouldn't recommend necessarily this book, but you could use Tai Kim online. There's lots of free apps and dictionaries online that can help, lots of YouTube channels. But you can catch my drift, right? Like there, for what this is, if you are not, um, doing total immersion, doing speed running this thing, trying to learn it as fast as you can, as is the trend. Japanese from zero is a pretty solid option. I would actually learn from Japanese from zero before I learned uh, from beginning Japanese, just personal preference. Although these do hit a lot of the same kind of keynote points. So if you're trying to, if you're a budget learner, obviously, you know, this is five books or more for all I know. Um, and we don't even know how much it would take for you to get through both Genki books to do inside here. And they're roughly the same price. Genki books are about $30. This guy's about $25, $26. So you do get more dollar for dollar from Genki, but I do see a place for this. I don't know. I'll let you guys decide. Let's head back over to the studio, wrap this up, and you can tell me what you think down below. So that is my starting review of Japanese from zero, just the book one. And if you guys go, oh, there's more, or oh, I don't like it. Well, I have more books to review. This is gonna be a series about this textbook and we will learn together about it. But whether you agreed or disagreed, your opinion matters here. Like you will help influence the greater conversation. So how can you help someone five, 10 years from now who might see this because they're trying to decide if this is the textbook for them. Go down below, you can leave a like. It would mean a lot to me. It also helps this video get seen by more people. And of course, you should comment down below. It's almost like a forum. I don't have a Reddit thread, at least not that I'm aware of. There are those foot fetish sites, but that, 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 wasn't, my, that wasn't my choice. That was a college project. And you could tell me, that person 10 years from now, whoever's reading that, what you think of the book. Did you use the book? That's a big one. If you used it, what did you like? What did you dislike? Would you recommend it to other people? Let's make this a good footstone in history where people can look back at it and go, oh wow, there's all these people that said all these nice things or oh wow, there's a lot of room to grow here. I think that's really cool and I think it's kind of unique. Not a lot of people do that. So give me, give me your thoughts. If you like this video, be sure to like it down below. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or 
compliments. You can leave them in the comment box down below. I do personally read all of them. I really do, by the way. I know a lot of people say that. I read every single one of them. Further, if you would like to support the channel, or if you would like to see the remainder of this series, my When is Japan opening because of the demonetization virus series, you should subscribe. It's free. It doesn't cost you any money. I put out one of these videos every week on Wednesday. I stream on Saturdays on Twitch. Twitch TV forward slash Chad Zimmerman at That's My Chat on Twitter. Pretty much Chad Zimmerman on anything else. Just search it. I, maybe I'm on there. I don't know. You guys should also check out. I'm a published author. Self-published. Still published. On Amazon, I have a link down below to all my books, and we are releasing a new Japanese book about yokais coming out here shortly. So go check out my Amazon store, maybe follow me, it'll alert you if I post it. And from my heart to yours, love hard, love deep, and I will see you all next week. Now let's go over to the subscriber on the outro. <laughs>